Now, I, I wanted to follow up uh, on my comments regarding uh, Steph's situation from yesterday. In doing so, hope to provide uh, better clarity for all, right, and, and a better understanding of the, the, the situation. Um, so I think there's a lot of things out there that aren't accurate. Um, let me be clear. Steph did everything that we that he was asked to do. He was here Monday and executed his physical on time. Steph reported yesterday, Tuesday, and uh, reported for meetings, at which time um, we had a good conversation, um, great communication. And we got to a point yesterday where I just, we just felt like we all needed a break and some space. And so I gave Steph permission uh, to get some space and 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 uh, and head out and uh, and then picked up those conversations after practice. Um, so let me make it clear: it was it was not Steph leaving unexcused. He was excused by me. You are now listening to the Watering Buffalo podcast with your hosts Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. What's up, people from the Warning Buffalo Bills podcast? A new face, a new voice. If you're listening by podcast, if you're watching through the uh, YouTube channel. Listen, um, I've been on their show before. If you don't know who I am, I am T. I'm the host of, a co-host of Not Your Average Podcast in the 716 with Mike. And also co-host with Robin on Tea Time with Robin. But yes, so let's dig into it because Twitter was in flames and on fire. Buffalo Bills fans were ready to ship Diggs out and to get rid of him. I wasn't on on that wagon. I wanted to see what was going on first. I was really shocked, but, you know, it was a lot towards the end of the season with Stefan Diggs and, you know, he went on his press tour towards the end of the season and you could see that he was still upset so coming back to mini camp obviously still upset so the bills had their mini camp this week or last week and the main story would be was is stefan diggs going to show up now i was going to do a pod to say now if he doesn't show up what happens so he didn't show up. And I played you the clip with Sean McDermott stating that he excused him. But prior to that, on Tuesday, there was a lot of speculations of what happened. Why didn't he show up? And was he going to be fined? Um, I think it was $16,000 each time you, you don't show up for, for a mandatory uh, minicamp. So let's go through it. Sean McDermott um, addressed the, the, the reporters and he had said that he was very concerned that Stefan Diggs is not at um, mandatory minicamp today. But everybody else was. Now I played you the clip and that was on Wednesday. Wednesday. It, it, after a while, it just all becomes this big old blur because a lot happened that week last week um but come to find out well let's just go through it so he showed up and they had a meeting now like he said in the in the video he excused steph diggs apparently the meeting got heated and you can see kind of the frustration with with Sean McDermott and his first pre- yeah, fre- first press presser on Tuesday that the word very concerned took Bill's mafia at a, a at a what is going on okay why are you concerned should we be concerned since you're concerned coach should, should we be con- be concerned it the word concerning it just ran everybody ran with it and including me Cause I'm like, all right, what is this? Um, it's still June. Totally understand it's still June. But then Stefan Diggs' agent came out and said his client was in Buffalo. He took his physical. He met with the head coach in the DM um, for the past two days. Uh, but he said he 
he will be at the mini camp, um, mandatory mini camp entirely, the entire mini camp. Um, then Josh Allen came up for his presser and you can uh, obviously see that Josh was trying to choose his words and make sure that nothing was, you know, nothing really came out to point size or the point fingers at anyone. Uh, Josh was saying things of it wasn't, it's not football related, but then saying football related. We will never know like really what is going on per se. We can speculate. We can say it's, you know, Diggs want more targets. We can say that he got upset because of Hopkins talk. We wouldn't, we don't know, but we do know Josh loves Stefan Diggs. He said it. He also talked about it's definitely something with communication. And I think for, and I'm speculating here, I think for Josh and this this year going into this season, he already said that he's going to be more, de- more determined than ever, right? And if that means communicating with people on the line, communicating with your wide receivers, communicating with your 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 coordinator, whatever the case may be, communicating with Sean McDermott, saying like we've seen last year where there was two wide receivers in one space, like they were not running the same route, but they were in the same space. Why is that? There's a communication breakdown. Something has to happen. So if maybe that's it again we don't know Vaughn came out he spoke um he said he tries to stay off social media because of you know stuff like this but he stands with digs so then when he said i stand with digs i'm like okay are we are there sides are we choosing sides now are we on the sides of stefan digs josh allen sean mcdermott ken dorsey what what are we doing here because I'm on the side of winning footballs, football games with the Buffalo Bills. Super Bowl, right? That's, as a fan, that's where I'm at. Also, too, Vaughn spoke about, he said, let's keep the main thing the main thing. And I don't really know what that means, but if you're saying the main thing, let's keep the main thing Buffalo Bills football, I'm with it. I'm with it. Keep the main thing the main thing. He also was asked if, what would you tell players if they had a question about what's going on with Diggs and the organization? He said, mind your business. He also went into, there's players that, there's no one player above the team, but they, you also know that there's players on the team that are that get treated differently. We understand that. We, we totally understand that. Um, so a few hours later, his agent came out and I said that that his, his, his client was in Buffalo. He took his physical. Um, on that day, on that same day, Twitter, so after that first day, there were people, my Bills Mafia, I love you. But you guys were ready to um, take his C off his chest, saying he was selfish, he's not a leader. Um, Trade him, cut him, do all this. Now, he wants to play with his brother. I think he does want to play with his brother at some point in his career. But right now, he's a Buffalo Bill. And there's nothing you could do about that because it's too much cap hit, dead cap hit. And I guess if you release him or whatever the case may be, you'll be, you know, clearing up 1.6 million, but the next year it'll be too much. I don't think that Steph not, does not want to be a Buffalo Bill. I think fans are just taking what Stefan Diggs is doing and taking it and personalizing it. I mean, we can, we all, wait, we all have problems with our, with our boss sometimes, all right? And we handle it the best way we can. Sometimes it's not always the best way. Not, sometimes it's not always the right way. But we handle it. Um, so on Wednesday, it was a dig sighting. 
Sean came out and, and, and like I said, at the top of this podcast, he wanted to clear some things up. And he said he sent Steph home. He excused him. But I think everyone was saying, why didn't Sean say this in the first place? Why didn't he come out and say, Steph Diggs is not here because I sent him home. I excused him. I mean, and that could have been just the end of it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answers for that. I'm just painting you a picture of what happened. I'll say this when it comes to to Diggs and how hard he works and and we've seen how hard he works. We've seen that players, teammates have said how hard Stefan Diggs works. Um, we've seen or heard that Stefan is a passionate player. Um, Isaiah McKenzie said that he, when he's at his highest, he you can't communicate with him. You can't say that, Steph, you're wrong. He'll listen to you. Miscommunication, for sure. Stefan Diggs, Brandon Bean, maybe Ken Dorsey, all of it is just a miscommunication from top to bottom. And hopefully by the beginning of the season, or in training camp, we'll have an understanding. And maybe for me, I don't need Stefan Diggs sitting down and saying what was wrong. I don't. I don't. So they canceled Thursday's uh, mini camp because that's what they normally do. That's nothing new. They've done it before. So when Wednesday came out, and I'm going backwards, I apologize. So Wednesday came out, people were relieved, but still people were saying that he needs to go. This is not how a captain acts. He's selfish again. There was even something that came out that said um, Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick um, apparently stated that the real digs will show like he's shown in Minnesota. Let me quote, let me, let me, let me, and I quote, a year ago at, at his retirement, Ryan Fitzpatrick told me, and I'm not going to say who said it, Stefan Diggs will soon be a problem for the Buffalo Bills. Now, I don't know if Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fitz Magic said this, and I'm just so perturbed by even, you know, quoting this, but it, you know, it's something It was something out there. Now we kind of know that they didn't want to let go of Chad Hall. The wide receivers court loved Chad Hall. Loved him so much they bought him a car, a truck. Now was, you know, wide receivers upset that Chad left? Maybe, maybe. Um, Because Chad was a great wide receivers coach. It came out that his wife wanted move, wanted to move back, move to Florida. And so he took the job in, in um, Jacksonville. It was a lateral job. He was a wide receiver coach over there too, I want to say. I mean, there was just a lot of moving parts um, this coming up season. And I don't have a problem when it comes to my wide receiver wanting to be on the same page with my quarterback same page with my offensive coordinator, same page with the head coach, who now is a defensive coordinator, same page with the organization, Brandon Bean. I don't have a problem with that. Did he do it the wrong way? I don't know. I could say yes, I can say no. But what? Wh- who am I to say what he did was right or wrong? He did it the way he felt best. I just say that, the way he felt best. So what's up next for, now they broke, no more mini camps, no more OTAs, nothing, right? So now the Buffalo Bills are on a break. They're on a a mini break until 
July 22nd. They will be at St. Fisher's, St. Fisher's University in Rochester. Hopefully I can get some tickets for that. Um, because last year, I tell you, last year, it was insane. The tickets went so fast that um, I had to hit up somebody for tickets. And I want to thank Drew for giving me some tickets, two tickets. So I appreciate that. But, you know, the drama at One Bills Drive, it was insane. Insane. But not even that. There's other other teams that also had issues. We weren't the only one that had issues when it comes to people not showing up for minicamp. Saquon Barkley said he'll sit. He would sit for his minicamp. He doesn't have a problem with not playing, right? He doesn't have a problem. The negotiation for his contract, he wants a contract. They went and gave Danny Dimes money and Saquon felt it's best that he sit, maybe. Another person that didn't show. Chiefs four-time pro bowler, defensive tackle, Chris Jones. He wants an extension this summer. He did not show up for a mandatory minicamp either. So not, I mean, the we're focused on the Buffalo Bills because that is our team, right? And we totally understand it. And that's what we're going to do. But there's other teams out here that's going through it as well. I want to say the Jets, um, Williams, Quinton Williams. Well, they canceled their mini camp. The Jets canceled their mini camp. But, but Williams also is one in extension this off season. Nothing has been said if he's going to get it or not. But he's also up for his contract extension as well. Let's talk about Juju Schuster with New England. He's not sitting out, but um, he didn't show up for for Monday starting their mini camp. I want to say Juju is experiencing some type of an injury, knee injury, I want to say. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But he's not he's not ready either. And I just seen this today that Claypool for the Bears is having some off off um, off season issues as well. They don't think he's all in. But let's go back to the Jets because the Jets just found out that Chuck Clark has suffered a knee injury and I want to say it's a torn ACL. So he might be out for for the season for the Jets season and they just picked up a um a cornerback from, of course, from the backers. Uh, but getting back on the the bills, I had a question for for my own podcast. Me and Mike talk about. We have this this segment is called care or care less, and in this segment, I had asked, do we care or don't care? Um, about players following their team. Like, do we care if a player follows or don't follow or unfollow a team? Like, I wanted they. I guess they had said that Diggs stopped following the Buffalo Bills, which I don't have a problem with it. I just, I for me, I don't have problem with players following anyone or not following anyone. I I, I can care less about that. Another one I had, do we care or care not about Leslie Frazier maybe being hired with the Giants? Maybe he's joining the Giants. I can care or care less about that as well. Um, But getting back to this dig situation and trying to understand if there is anything, well, 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 Sean McDermott said it's resolved. It will not affect, it won't be a distraction come coming up this upcoming um, season for the Buffalo Bills. Diggs is focused on winning Super Bowls and he's frustrated. Diggs was in an interview and he had stated like 
it was the frustration with the Bengals game and him not being targeted, I guess. And you, we kind of seen it with the Bears, that Bears game where Sean McDermott and him was talking and he wasn't being targeted. And we, I, I could honestly say that in some of these games, I was, I was like, like wondering, is Diggs hurt? Because some of these games, it was like Diggs was not even being targeted. So I can understand the fact that maybe Diggs is his frustration is this offense is not flowing through me. I can understand that, and I can I can get the frustration because as a fan, as a fan, you can understand the frustration too. So whatever it is, I hope and I pray that you know come training camp, come when they meet again, that this all will be. You know, all will be subsided and not something that is going to be something that's mentioned. Because who's to say in game 10, when Diggs is not targeted, reporters are going to say, so how do you feel about your production out there? How do you feel about the fact that you only got five targets out there? How do you feel? And they, and, but they won. But how do you feel about you not being targeted? You know? So I get it, but I just hope that, I mean, I don't think that it'll be a distraction for the Buffalo Bills because the Bills have gone through so much um, adversity last year that a lot of things weren't a distraction for them. They still won, you know? So I just hope and I pray that um, everybody will come to the table and everything will be great. Like Von Miller said, keep the main thing the main thing. And then that being said, I just want to say thank you guys. And, you know, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And I appreciate the guys allowing me to be on their pod on this episode. I appreciate it. The Wandering Buffalo Bills podcast on the fan base network again. I am your host, T. Look, I am on. I I know these guys. These are my dudes, right? These are my guys. But I just want to I want to thank them. This is a privilege and an honor to be on here. I appreciate you guys. I really, really do. I am on Thursdays at two o'clock on the Building Buffalo um, Network Facebook page at two p.m. on Thursdays. I drop a pod on Saturdays, me and Mike, live, um, not live. Our pod on Saturdays, it comes out. Thursday's a live pod. So if you're not doing anything, go over there and check us out. You know, nothing to do. If you have nothing to do, go over there and check us out. We will, we appreciate it. Again, I am T. This is the Wandering Podcast. Thank you guys. Peace out. And always, go Bills.